We purchased this at the thrift store about a month ago for $15, and today we're gonna take it from 80s and 90s drab traditional to a fun, funky farmhouse piece. Has it already been a month? It goes by so it's fast. It's been a month at least since we bought this. Whew. We're using salt wash on this piece and DIY paint. The last time we used salt wash, we did it all over the whole piece. This one, we're just going to do some selected areas. Salt wash gets it mixed up with paint to a one-to-one -one ratio. I've got four ounces of paint in there, so I'm gonna add four ounces of salt wash. When you're mixing up the salt wash, you want a nice cake batter-like consistency. It's really easy to get that. Right now, that's kind of too thick. I need to add a little more paint. My ratio is a little bit off, which is okay. It's all right to add a little bit if you need to. This DIY paint is already clay-based and it's really pigmented. I really love the way it works with the salt wash. It mixes in really well and has a really strong bond to most surfaces. All right, I think we've got the cake batter. It's standing up pretty much straight. I have a bunch of farmhouse hooks from Amazon. They're really inexpensive. We'll link them below. They're about a dollar-ish a piece. So we're gonna switch these out for those hooks. But if you didn't have access to those, you could totally just use like a good spray paint or paint it with DIY and seal them. If these went black, they would definitely up the modern farmhouse look. Just some lightweight spackle. We're gonna fill these holes because we don't wanna to have to mess around with the new hooks not covering where they go. So we thought it would be fun to just do some random salt wash instead of an all over look because the last project we did, we did all over. You're just gonna stipple it on and build up peaks where you want them and do it in kind of a random pattern. That way when you put the top coat over in distress, it doesn't look like it was machined. It looks more authentic. After we complete this process, when it's about half dry, we'll come take the brush and knock down the big stiff peaks, let it dry completely, and we'll be ready for the next coat. So, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I intentionally went over Sharpie marker because Sharpie marker is horrible to paint over. It always bleeds through. If I put the DIY little black dress with salt wash over it, it completely covers it and I don't have to worry about it coming through. Jamie has left me unattended and she said, hey, be random. I am trying really hard to be random. We'll see how this looks when we're done. I almost have to close my eyes to not make a pattern. That feels random. All right, so how did I do on the random? Um, I think you did pretty good. I'm gonna add some more kind of on the top because that's gonna be like the most visible and then come up this way and then some more. I feel like normal wear, like across the edge of stuff is good. So, all right. So it's starting to dry out about halfway, a little bit tacky still. We just take our brush and we come across it and it's gonna knock down those peaks so we don't have any sharp edges. Zeb's coming in with his number 12 paint pixie. I'm gonna try out the new DIY sampler. It is the same size as the Paint Pixie Little D, but it's synthetic, and I'm super excited because it fits perfectly in a sample can. It's also gonna work perfectly for these shorter areas here to really get good coverage. You know what's funny? Like before you sand it off, it kinda looks like a piece of gum. Oh no, not a piece of gum. That's what it looks like, like right there, like some kid left it. Not that I know about that. It's like your arch nemesis is gum on furniture. I chewing gum. Yes, it's the worst. Well, I was cleaning underneath the bar the other day and I noticed one of your children, not one of mine for sure, left a little piece of gum. <laughs> and I was like, seriously? You did not just do that. We could have taped this mirror off or taken it off, but when I went to check on how it was attached, it's got a lot of staples in the back of it, and I didn't want to have to mess with those, and sometimes the mirror breaks, taking them out, getting the staples <laughs> off. So that does not have a super great record at stapling mirrors back in. You know, you got a nice, neat staple line, and then one goes and gets your mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely know that if I did it, it'd break. It's time to start putting the finishing touches on this. I'm sanding this with 220 grit sandpaper on random Orville sander, and this is really gonna make all that texture and detail show up. People asked in the last video that we did if it feels rough. 
Once the texture has been sanded and you make that come back through with the two-tone, it's not rough at all. It's actually really smooth to the touch. Time to put the hardware back on. This is the farmhouse style hook Jamie was talking about. It's gonna really change the look of this piece, just these two simple little hooks. These are the original pulls that were on here and they no longer match very well with our black farmhouse hooks. So I've got this card catalog pull that Jamie's got. She orders them off of Amazon. It used to be a bronzy brass color and we just painted it black with little black dress. So I am waxing this with DIY clear wax. Be really careful to get the sanding dust off because that black underneath is heavily pigmented. Otherwise you'll get a little bit of a gray hue, which I'm not worried about because it just makes it look older, but something to consider. We're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna hit it with the buffer in the morning. All right, while Jamie's waxing, I'm just gonna start cleaning this window here. And I'm not gonna get the paint too wet. I'm gonna kind of control it with this rag here. But I have a scraper. A lot of times we use an actual razor blade, but if you're worried about scraping your mirror, a plastic scraper like this works great. So we were working on this. We were starting to clean the mirror and do the waxing and Jamie walked by it a couple times in between things and she was like, man, I am loving the way that looks. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I like chippy paint and I like texture. And one of the key indications of like a really old piece is when it's just got that layered crunchiness to it. And I don't even know how to explain it, but it's really hard to achieve. I've tried it for a long time. So this definitely is a favorite combo of mine. And here's a little secret. We did not wipe all the black dust. So down in all the nooks and crannies and deliciousness, there's like almost like a gray wax from the black dust. Well, we didn't even have to do anything extra, bonus. It just nicely mixed in and stuck down in all the nooks and crannies of the salt wash. We're gonna go ahead and get this listed on our new home decor website, as well as in the shop. With what's going on in the world, things aren't really selling as much in the shop as we would like. If you're interested in buying this piece, hit up jamierayvintagehome.com. And if you're interested in creating your own piece, you can always pick up these paint and products at jamierayvintage.com. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY and crunchy.